There's no business like show business, at least like no business we know. And the motto of showbiz is that regardless of what else happens, the show must go on. But what do you do when the star of the show kicks the bucket before filming is complete? How do they deal? Well, today we'll examine the cases of actors who died in the middle of filming. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Channel. After that, leave a comment and let us know what other Hollywood topics you would like to hear about. Okay, places everybody, and action. On January 22nd, 2008, 28-year-old Heath Ledger was found unconscious in his bed by his housekeeper and massage therapist. Upon learning of the situation, Ledger's friend, Mary Kate Olson, dispatched a private security guard to the scene, but it was too late. Ledger had succumbed to what would later be ruled a drug overdose. The Australian actor, then most famous for appearances in films like Brokeback Mountain, had just wrapped filming his part as the Joker in Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight and was in the middle of production for Terry Gilliam's The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus when he passed away. To complete the film, Gilliam brought on Ledger's close friends Johnny Depp, Jude Law, and Colin Farrell to play transformed versions of Ledger's character in the remaining scenes. On November 30th, 2013, Paul Walker, most famous for his role as Brian O'Connor in the Fast and the Furious franchise, was leaving a charity event with his former racing friend, Roger Rodas. Rodas lost control of his Porsche Carrera GT and slammed into a tree, instantly claiming the lives of both men. At the time, Furious 7 was still in the middle of filming, and Universal Pictures put the movie on an indefinite hold while they met with Walker's family to discuss the best way to proceed. Eventually, Walker's parts were completed using a combination of special effects and stunt doubles, including his two real-life brothers, Caleb and Cody. In other words, they completed Walker's final role with the power of family. Brian O'Connor would be proud. An urban legend holds that Bruce Lee's family was cursed, and while you may not believe in curses, it's easy to see how the legend got started. Lee's life was cut tragically short at the age of 32 under bizarre circumstances, and his son Brandon Lee was later killed during a stunt gone wrong on the set of the supernatural action movie, The Crow. On March 31st, 1993, while filming a scene in which Lee's character was supposed to get shot, the prop handgun contained a fragment of a real bullet left in the chamber, after it was previously loaded to shoot a close-up. When the blank in the gun fired, the fragment was expelled with the force of a bullet hitting Lee in the abdomen. He passed away later that day at the age of 28. Rather than shelve the movie, the filmmakers decided to complete The Crow using stand-ins and special effects, and it became a cult hit. On October 31st, 1993, River Phoenix, famous for appearances in movies like Stand By Me and My Own Private Idaho, succumbed to a drug overdose outside the Viper Room in Hollywood. The autopsy found various drugs, including cocaine and morphine, in his system. And there were subsequent reports that Phoenix had been on a bender with Red Hot Chili Peppers guitarist John Fruscienti. At the time of his death, Phoenix was about 80% finished with filming his role in the George Slyzer directed drama Dark Blood. The movie would remain unfinished for 19 years, and the Phoenix family would refuse to assist in its completion. It was finally screened for a private audience at the Netherlands Film Festival in 2012 with Slicer using narration to take the place of the missing scenes. It later screened publicly at a few more festivals and received mostly positive reviews. On February 2nd, 2014, Philip Seymour Hoffman was found deceased from a heroin overdose. After more than 25 years of sobriety, the Oscar-winning actor had tragically relapsed just eight months before his death. At the time, Hoffman had a week left of filming for the second installment of The Hunger Games, Mockingjay, but he had completed enough of his role for the movie to be finished. The movie was dedicated to the late actor. On November 29, 1981, Natalie Wood drowned off the coast of California's Catalina Island. Wood was on a boat trip with her husband, Robert Wagner, actor Christopher Walken, and the boat's captain, Dennis Davern. While Wood's death was initially ruled accidental, the circumstances around the event remain mysterious. In 2018, police named Wagner as a person of interest, citing him as the last person to see her alive. 
At the time of her demise, Wood was in the middle of production on the 1983 sci-fi thriller Brainstorm, which co-starred Walken. The studio tried to scrap the production after Wood's passing, but director Douglas Trumbull was able to convince the insurance company to pay for its completion. Wood's sister Lana was used to complete her few remaining scenes, and the movie was released to mixed reviews. Iconic blonde bombshell Marilyn Monroe was in the middle of filming the comedy Something's Got to Give when her body was discovered in her Brentwood, California home on August 5, 1962. Monroe's cause of death was reported as an overdose of barbiturates. The movie, only partially completed, could not be finished without Monroe, so it was never released. However, that doesn't mean it's completely lost to time. Footage from it was used to create the 1990 documentary Marilyn, Something's Gotta Give. John Candy was one of the most beloved comedy stars of the 1980s, known for playing big-hearted characters in movies like Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. However, his final film, Wagons East, was about as far from iconic as you can get. Holding an impressive 0% on Rotten Tomatoes, Wagons East has long been counted among the worst westerns of all time. Sadly, after completing his last day of principal photography, Candy suffered a massive heart attack in his sleep on March 4, 1994. Wagons East was completed using body doubles, special effects, and rewrites. But the end result was a bittersweet tribute when the movie bombed at the box office. Cory Monteith was one of the breakout stars of Fox's musical comedy Glee. Sadly, on July 13, 2013, between the show's fourth and fifth seasons, the 31-year-old actor passed away in his Vancouver, Canada hotel room. Authorities determined he had suffered an accidental overdose, but ruled out any foul play. To honor Monteith's passing, Glee aired a special episode called The Quarterback, depicting the aftermath of the death of Monteith's character, Finn Hudson. The generally well-received episode concluded with a dedication to Monteith. On September 11, 2003, while filming the ABC sitcom Eight Simple Rules for Dating My Teenage Daughter, iconic sitcom star John Ritter, most famous for his work on Three's Company, collapsed from chest pains. The actor was rushed to a hospital across the street and passed away later that evening from an aortic dissection caused by a previously undiagnosed congenital heart defect. The creative team wrote Ritter's character's death into the series shortened the title to Eight Simple Rules, and added veteran actor James Garner to the cast as a live-in grandparent. The show continued in its new iteration for another season and a half, before getting canceled in 2005. On September 4, 2006, beloved Australian adventurer, conservationist, and animal advocate Steve Irwin, famously known as the Crocodile Hunter, tragically perished after a freak encounter with a stingray. At the time of his death, the crocodile hunter was filming the underwater documentary Ocean's Deadliest. The documentary would be completed after Irwin's passing, and the final product would contain no footage of or even reference to his death, other than a dedication. Interestingly, while Irwin's widow Terry claims the footage of his final moments was destroyed, some involved in the production claim it still exists. When Don Rickles passed away at age 90 in 2017, he had yet to record his parts for 2019's Toy Story 4. But director Josh Cooley couldn't imagine anyone else as Mr. Potato Head, and he wasn't about to let death stop him. To complete the film, the Pixar editorial team poured over two decades worth of recordings from Don Rickles, including dialogue from outtakes, shorts, and even from licensed toys, and logged every word, every cough, and every hum so that they would be able to put together whatever they needed. Then, Cooley worked alongside screenwriters Andrew Stanton and Stephanie Folsom to write general lines for the Mr. Potato Head character, which they pulled together using the database of Rickles' quotes they had archived. It worked, and the finished film was a hit. Horror film icon Bella Lugosi, best known for playing Count Dracula, suffered a fatal heart attack on August 16, 1956, while filming low-budget B-movie Plan 9 from Outer Space. After Lugosi's death, notorious director Ed Wood asked his family's chiropractor to take over shooting Lugosi's remaining scenes, despite not looking or sounding anything like the actor. How did it turn out? Well, Plan 9 has famously been called the worst film of all time. 
but it has a massive cult following that persists to this day. The legendary horror actor would have arguably been tickled. Known for starring on the classic sitcom Sanford and Son, actor Red Fox died on October 11, 1991, after suffering a heart attack on the set of his show The Royal Family. Because Fox's Sanford and Son character often faked heart attacks as a running joke, Fox's castmates first believed the actor was joking, but soon realized the horrible truth. The show was designed as a vehicle for Fox, so when the decision was made to continue production without him, it suffered in the ratings. Producers created a special episode to deal with the passing of Fox's character, and brought in Jackie Harry to try and retool the show. Despite trying Harry out in two completely different roles, the show never recovered from the loss of its star, and was cancelled before the end of its season. Just 12 days after her ABC series Eight is Enough first aired, Emmy Award-winning actress Diana Hyland was diagnosed with breast cancer and passed away on March 27, 1977. Despite the fact that only a handful of episodes had aired, Hyland's character, the family's mother, was not recast. Rather, her death was written into the show, and Eight is Enough would run for five more seasons. On July 23, 1982, veteran actor Vic Morrow perished in a dramatic accident while filming a war scene for The Twilight Zone, the movie. Morrow and two child actors were shooting an escape scene when a helicopter hovering 25 feet above crashed on top of them, fatally injuring all three. Director John Landis was charged with involuntary manslaughter, but was acquitted after a nine-month trial. The film was ultimately released to mixed reviews and caused Twilight Zone co-director Steven Spielberg to cut ties with Landis. On March 15, 1958, Hollywood icon Tyrone Power, famous from classics like 1940's The Mark of Zorro, was filming a sword fight for the 1959 epic Solomon and Sheba. Complaining that his arm hurt, Power stopped filming and then suffered a massive heart attack on set. Tragically, he passed away en route to the hospital. After much consideration, the studio decided to recast Power's part with Yul Brynner. The movie was completed and released to box office success, but unfavorable reviews. In fact, the film's director, King Vidor, publicly bemoaned how much better Power would have been in the role than Brenner. We imagine that was the last time Brenner did him a favor. Playing patriarch Jock Ewing on iconic primetime soap Dallas, veteran actor Jim Davis appeared in 75 episodes of the show's first four seasons. But Davis had been diagnosed with a brain tumor and succumbed on April 26, 1981, while season four was still on the air. As Dallas fans would remember, Davis's character Jock died in a helicopter crash on his way back from South America in an episode that aired in January 1982 an event that became a pivotal moment in the show's story. Despite Davis's loss, the show continued for nine more years. So what do you think? Which of these stories surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from Our Weird History.